Processing this. Thanks, honey. So, what'll it be? The usual? Sure. Some chicken salad. The time. What the hell? You know what? Hey, I'll show you when I'm done recording. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Oh, and you know what? Some more coffee. Yeah. Henry Adams. This is weird. Wait here. I'll have a look. What? Okay, I'm gonna shake Wait, did he just have a blue hoodie? I knew that I mean, yeah. his sister was at the in the club scene. Sarah, nice to see them in the um, local papers. We've been hearing about the people. I'm going to start a fucking job. I'm going to start a fucking job. I'm going to
I was now exposed as a singer. So we used to do some songs, and I would berate the audience to try to get them to clap along with us, hustling them in any way I could to try to get a reaction because we sucked, or I thought we sucked, or I didn't have any confidence in what we did. And I figured, well, I'll, if I can't get them to, if we can't play better, I'll beat them to death until they clap. It was fun, but it wasn't. A, it was just like, you know, we would have just been a cover band. It would have been just a fun cover band. I had a desire to get back to where I just was. Forget about exceeding that. I already I felt, like I said, the 2,000 people in the bar. I felt the power of a band. I wanted that, and I really wanted it. So we knew we had to do something. So we decided, let's get a singer. And so um, I called Dean again, and uh, he invited me to come up uh, to Hunter Mountain. The band was booked for a weekend. We could audition. If it worked out, we could rehearse and we could play that weekend. This was going to be my big audition and my big shot at stardom. And so we finally I gave him a chance, and we were like amazed at how good he was. And the, one of the greatest things is like uh, he, he didn't drink. After I did my audition, JJ took me outside, and he sort of said, "Well, I own the band." And uh, I own the PA system. Are you cool with that? And I said, yeah, okay. And he goes, all right, we'll see how 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 we'll see And uh, he invited me to come up uh, to Hunter Mountain, the band that he booked for a weekend. We could audition. If it worked out, we could rehearse. And we could play that weekend. This was going to be my big audition. And a big shot at Stormy. So we finally I gave him a chance, and we were like amazed at how good he was. And the, one of the greatest things is like uh, he, he didn't drink. After I did my audition, JJ took me outside, and he sort of said, "Well, I own the name, and uh, I own the PA system. Are you cool with that?" And I said, "Yeah, okay." And he goes, "All right, we'll see how we'll see how it goes." Now, I was never officially told, you're in. So yeah, said, we'll you're see how it goes. So I've been sort of on a trial basis for the last five years. You know, I don't know. I'm waiting to get the call. So we started rehearsing with Kevin. And that was a problem because Kevin's drumming was not really that good. And we knew that was the next issue. JJ had a friend named Tony Petri, who we had worked with years ago. JJ said, this guy, Tony, is a hard hitter, great drummer, and he's in. So uh, we started rehearsals behind Kevin John Grace's back. We established a pattern in Twisted Sister, you don't fire a guy until you have a new guy ready because you can't afford to lose dates. So we rehearsed with Tony, we got Tony all prepped, we tell Kevin to over. And now with the band of me and Dee and Tony and Kenny and Ed, that band, now makes the frontal assault on the Long Island Varsity. said, oh, this is where they go up and, you know, go back to that look. Yeah. 
sister, they, uh, you know, they, they were cool guys, and I was this 21-year-old from Long Island, who the door, I didn't have really the cool creds that they had in the fashion, and I really admired them a lot. JJ was our manager, Kevin was our agent, and I never had a discussion about 
individuals that are talking about Paul Hanson, Silver, Minute, TV Wife, Follow Me. He hated the songs that we were doing. Of course, the DB wasn't polite about it. You know, it wasn't like he went, hey, man, I just blurted out and he said, I, these songs are these songs are not not really great song, not gonna make a difference. Oh and I was just railing and Kevin Renner said, Do you write songs? Yeah. I'd written one with Harley. Co written one. And he goes, Do you have any songs to submit? And I said, No. He said, Well then shut up until you do. I came to JJ with an idea for a song and I don't remember it. I wanted to him. JJ, of course, did not realize the significance of what was happening for me. And when I presented this next song to him and I sang to him, I was just so nervous and uncomfortable. He was so... JJ said, Oh, it's about you. It's cute. And he turned away and started a conversation. Nobody else. It was really. <laughs> Depending on how you look at it, I feel like look at it as a motivating force for me to prove uh, to JJ World that I was somebody and, 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 the, and the, the impetus to me becoming this manic songwriter who just started churning songs out and hey, so um, if you look at it as that, because it was a good thing. Everyone was in the band, and I just sort of went into my own world and saw everything separately from the band. My sole purpose was to obliterate Georgia French and his songs and take over songwriting completely. I was maniacal and malicious, and uh, I did it. <laughs> I'm not a singer. I mean, he needed somebody like that. If he came with baggage, he could have grown up with baggage to a degree. It was Comeback, it was Pay the Price, I think, one of the first two tracks. That's when I was like, wow, I've got. <laughs> Oh. 